whole rationale for me choosing this course is very simple. Uh, data showed me that students needed the extra help. And I also knew from our assessment data that I needed my class data to reflect that we had been going over things in class, that they mastered the content. And so I really wanted to find a way to introduce them to the project and then help them work on their skills. So the two major focuses um, would be increasing their analysis skills, their identifying <coughs> skills, and then being able to naturally apply the skills that we've been talking about without feeling like they're stretching and um, just trying to do too much to use a particular skill. So just really making things natural. During this entire process, I had to consider, okay, what can I use? What will be beneficial? Going through, I did the activity in several steps. Ignore the typo on the screen. I first reminded my students of the key skills that we were going to be covering. And those are the 10 skills that they were required to just use and analyze in their most recent end of the course assessment. After we went over them, I showed them a clip and I told them that they would be responsible for identifying the skills that they saw and we then kind of stretched their analysis a little bit. So the first part was, tell me what you saw, how was it used positively, negatively, what was the effect? And then as we got further into our discussion, I wanted to attach value and appropriateness of use. And I wanted to talk about the effect, the ineffectiveness or the effectiveness of the skill that they viewed, and then transition that into real life applications. How might this work if this was your experience? Or what would have needed to be done if the person communicating didn't think about all of this other stuff that is affecting the communication environment. So I had to come up with the questions. And it was the pre-planning that really takes up the most time, but that's the nature of education. We went through all of the different rounds of the questions, and what I found is that they were able to easily identify the course concepts. When it came to the analysis, that's where we really had to focus more in, and um, I had to kind of draw the responses out of them. After completing that, I then did the introduction to their course cumulative assessment. You know, our college is on a move to make sure that we are really assessing what we say we teach. And so I walked them through the entire assessment. Um, and I did this at my 11 o'clock class and my 2 o'clock class the same day, so I had the opportunity to gauge how each class reacted, and now with the work having been submitted, I see the differences between the two classes. I am right now using Keynote, and it's the same software or app that I use to do my in-class presentation. It's pretty straightforward, just like making a PowerPoint that you would make anywhere else. For the presentation, I went through, I set up the slides. If there were links that I knew were easier to access, by planting it in the slide versus um, going through and having it in one of the apps, I use that. And uh, I just put little notes and things of that nature. The beautiful part is I can take this and load it to Blackboard so if somebody was absent from class that day, they can then do exactly what we did following the exact same steps. The one thing I did not do that day that I should have done was I uh, recorded the session. Mm -hmm. so that they would have had the live um, whiteboard notes that we had taken that day. And then, of course, my friendly, kind nature walking them through the steps. I'm joking. Oh, I would say to anyone who wants to incorporate the technology, really play with it, get an understanding for it. If there's a tutorial video, yes, use it, but dig deeper past the tutorial video. So I was happy to find that this wonderful risk guard is there. But here's the catch. If you pull it the wrong way, then all of your um, iPad device settings comes up. And so that's probably why I never really ever knew it was there. So uh, in class, at the beginning, I asked for students to tell me the concepts they remembered, and I jotted them down. And just to replicate what they did, 
Gary, can you tell us one of the communication skills you remember? Exactly, and that's what I felt like I got from one of my students. And so I felt like I had to dig, but they did give some really great responses. And the best um, one that I'll come up with since we're here at the end of the semester is, yay, it's almost over. But it just, it's really a, a portable whiteboard um, that you can use. <laughs> I'm using my finger. Want to know why? I can't find my beloved. <laughs> my PGCC uh, wonderful device to, to write with. So this morning I was scrambling around, but you can use your finger. You can also use text. Um, other things that I found to be useful, even as I was preparing for this, the countdown timer. This is useful. I use it for when I sometimes I'm giving speeches. Uh, this will let me know how long I am letting the clip play. It can let me know how long my presentation is if I step outside of the keynote, which does give you a time. I could have also chosen Prezi to do this because it's just a visual presentation, but I did decide to use Keynote because that was the first thing I opened. I'm going to go back to Keynote for a moment. The lessons I learned overall from the activity, and I'm not going to walk you through all the steps here, is that once you have the idea, you have an idea of which app you want to use, and then the class. Creating the material really is the most time-consuming part, but it's well worth it. And so if you can sit down and really invest the time into building your repository of materials, it will work out for you in the end. Don't get frustrated in the process. It's something else that is very important. I told you about missing um, cables and reflector not working, or the days when the network was down and I didn't realize that network the network connectivity affected reflector. Those are all things to keep in mind and not to give up. Um, so make sure you test your integration in addition to prepping it because every room will be different. And then of course, and this is something that I really wish I had done, I felt that my activity was still very basic in nature having watched some of the other showcases. So do something that goes beyond basic integration, something that can really draw your students in, but um, allow them to interact with the technology. I wanted you to consider using one of the polling apps that I found. And I think just with everything that happened that day threw me off and I didn't get a chance to tell them in advance, but even incorporating a polling app into that would have been great. Some changes that I would make to allow for this integration. Overall, it tells you how I plan to use it for another course. So start from the beginning of the semester to consider what it is you want to do. The earlier you know your schedule, the easier it will be to integrate your technology. Really find apps that are content related and usable. One of the most useful apps that I have found for communication and theater, I teach a lot of the speech courses, so whether it's Speech 1010, which is our intro to speech communication, or our Speech 1110 course, just being able to get up and practice a speech and be able to record yourself and time yourself is important to our students. So this wonderful app here, which is over to you, it's one of the wonderful free apps. I haven't paid for a single one. Um, this one helps. And a few weeks ago when I was going over to uh, show my students how to time their speeches in this. I showed them that. You can upload documents, you can uh, practice with the sample document that is there. And I have a remove all of my stuff, but it really is a great app. Other good apps that I've found that I've been able to use in class Hoopla. Uh, if you have a county library class, you have thousands of video clips that are useful. It gives you a dashboard with all of the, the clips and everything is categorized by type. Over the summer when I first got the iPad, I was able to show my class, which is speech 0955, the King speech. And in that course, it's very important that students learn how to 
use um, the U.S. English accent. We um, talk about accumulating a new accent in a course. And so uh, speaking on how someone's not being able to understand you can affect your position and authority and power. And so being able to really pull clips from that film helped them a lot. As you see, YouTube and files. Yes, I pull examples from live TV or even from um, my wonderful stash of on-demand things at home. Great. Uh, I think those are all of the major apps that I use in class. I'm still trying to find more that are really content specific. As you can see, um, I've been sucked into gaming. <laughs> but these aren't, all, these aren't all mine, I have to confess. Um, my mom, who happens to be a student here, when she goes to dialysis, a lot of times she'll want something that she can do to stay awake on the machine. So we found a way to incorporate the iPad and keeps her mind active and that kind of thing. And she's like, oh, can I work on my paper on this thing? Sure. And so and some of the pro productivity apps that I find useful, and even when I'm making class documents, the Dragon Dictation, um, I have a cloud for work and a cloud for home, so my Google Docs. Uh, I do use notes very quickly when I want to make a quick note. Numbers. This has been my friend. Uh, all of these wonderful, colorful schedules you see here help me tell my students when they're giving their speeches in class. I create them on the go. Maybe I'm sitting in traffic or waiting for my mom in mm -hmm. dialysis or someplace else, wherever we might be. I can still be productive and then create a photo and upload it to Blackboard. And so I find that extremely helpful. Um, yay, speeches ended today for this class. Um, and then I'm sure that most of you have figured out some of the other productivity apps pages. At first I was skeptical. I was like, yeah, great, what am I going to do with this? But you have to play with the stuff. And here's the reason. So here's this wonderful Speech 1090 role play assignment. I pulled it from our uh, PGCC portal, downloaded it here. I have it with me, so if a student has a question, it's right here in front of me. They say, well, I don't have it. Can you share it with me? Sure. Great. I can share it in, by opening in another app. I can use it by sending an, I link, um, an iCloud link. I can save it as a PDF, what have you. And so this really has been very, very helpful. Um, I've created documents from scratch here, um, just playing around with things. And I've had fun working with the different fonts and colors. And it becomes helpful. And one of the uh, benefits to having this device, and I'm going to go to one of my clouds here, is that students now have access to me 24 hours a day. <laughs> <laughs> That's really why I was afraid to take the class. But I do have a bad habit of being a night owl. And so if I'm up and someone sends me something, I can go through and actually break their work or look at it. And so this is a speech that a student did. She sent me some basic information, and I was able to help her improve her work. One of the things that scared me initially was, oh, no. I've done all of this work here. I have no way to get it back to you. And so I had to uh, work with sharing links through the, the drive that I've used. And this is Dropbox, so that was easier. Initially, I started using my Google Drive, but that has so much of my personal content on it that I didn't want to um, always have the, her stuff linked there. And so the benefit with that one, however, is you get to put in comments and you can open it online. And so it just becomes a little different. And I have taken her document off of here, but as you can see with the little icon with the pen and the people, these are probably some of the most um, useful apps, uh, documents, sorry, that I go into and just making them accessible to others uh, really does help.